America's health insurance plans, which is the trade group for private health insurance companies, published some information on how they spend every dollar they receive in premiums. So let's take a look at that here. So uh, it says, where does your premium dollar go? And it breaks it down. 22.1 cents on prescription drugs. Uh, then physician services, 22 cents. 19.8 outpatient services. 15.8 inpatient services. So what that means is, to, to make it as simple as possible, about 80% of every premium dollar goes towards medical expenses for private for-profit health insurance companies. Now, look, you might look at that and say, hey, that's pretty good, right? 80%? Here's the thing. Number one, that's actually... They're only at this level because Obamacare forced them to be at this level. So it used to be the case with health insurance companies that sometimes 50% of their money would be going to overhead and only 50% goes to healthcare, which is nuts. You know, some it was like 60% of their money goes to healthcare, 40% goes to overhead. Just these insane wild ratios that are indefensible. So one of the rules under Obamacare was I think 80%, 80% of the money has to go towards actual healthcare for private health insurance companies. So point number one is they're only this good because of Obamacare. But point number two is actually more devastating, which is they didn't even realize it. The American uh, America's health insurance plans, the, this group here of for-profit private health insurance companies didn't realize it, but they just made the case for single payer. So you're thinking, wait, what, why, how, how did you come to that conclusion? Well, Daniel Marins explains here, by contrast, Medicare, the largest U.S. public insurer, paid just 1.5% of its budget to administer traditional insurance plans for seniors and workers with severe disabilities in 2015, according to official data. The rest of Medicare's budget went to paying doctors, hospitals, drug companies, and other healthcare providers. When you account for administrative costs of Medicare's private plans, which cover some one-third of Medicare beneficiaries, Medicare's overhead approaches 6.4% of its budget. The comparison shows that expanding Medicare to cover the entire population or adopting a single-payer health insurance system would significantly reduce health care costs by eliminating a whole lot of expenses that aren't related to medical care. That's in part because Medicare does not have to advertise its services, make a profit for investors, or reward its executives with multi-million dollar compensation packages as private insurers do. So, in other words, to boil that down to as simple as can be here, about 80% of the money goes to actual health care for private insurance companies. In Medicare, 94% goes to health care. 80% for private insurance, 94% for Medicare. And on top of that, you cover more people with Medicare. You can cover everybody with Medicare. So, with uh, private health insurance, that's not the case. They try to weasel out of covering people. They reject people. Medicare doesn't reject people. So, you pay less, and you cover more people. There is no debate. For the 9,762nd fucking time, the answer, factually, is a Medicare for All system is better on costs, better for the American people, better for everybody. This is why other modern nations are kicking our ass on healthcare, because they all have one version or another of a single-payer system. We do not. And our private for-profit health insurance companies brag about 80% of the money they get going to healthcare. With Medicare, they're not bragging, and 94% of their money goes to healthcare. And by the way, that number could probably be even higher, because there's a part of Medicare that, it, that it does a partnership with private companies, Medicare Part D, and they're probably the problem. That's probably the biggest problem. If you get rid of that part of it and just expand traditional Medicare, then you probably have that number go up even more. Uh, unbelievable, man. This isn't a debate, but what's amazing is the power of propaganda, because... Right-wing commentators, Republican politicians, for the longest time, they've grown the fear in the minds of people in middle America, and they make them think like, the big bad government gonna kill your grandma if you, if you have government health care. And then those same people will use Medicare, and those same people will use the VA, and those same people will use Medicaid. 
And they'll hold up fucking signs at Republican rallies that say, keep your government hands off my Medicare. That is the government! That is the government! The solution is to expand Medicare to cover everybody. That's the solution to all of our healthcare problems. And we know the answer, but there's a, a big issue standing in the way. Or a big roadblock standing in the way. You know what it is? The private health insurance companies lobby the government. They pay campaign contributions to politicians, so politicians do their bidding. That's the problem. The problem is corruption. The problem is money in politics. If health insurance companies weren't allowed to lobby Congress, and they couldn't give them money, if that was illegal, then the politicians would represent the people, because the people pay them, and they'd go, oh, well, the answer for the people, who I'm supposed to represent, is a Medicare for All system, let's do that. But no, now they represent the special interests and the corporations and the health insurance companies. And the result is we have a shittier system, we cover fewer people, and you pay more for it.